Parenting Teens with Dr. Cam, and I'm your host, Dr. Cam. And today I'm talking with Amy Harmon, therapist and eating disorder specialist, and also the author of Perfectly Imperfect Compassionate Strategies to Cultivate a Positive Body Image. Amy has been working as a therapist for over 15 years and has a specialty treating women and girls with eating disorders. She loves working with teens and their parents to help them navigate eating disorder recovery and frequently speaking on the topic of body image. So welcome, welcome, Amy. I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks for having me. Sure. Am I breaking up a little bit? Just a little. Okay, there's like a slight delay, so I'm not sure what's going on with this. Everything changes. So, Amy, welcome. Technology aside, <laughs> we'll figure this out. But I would love to hear a little bit first of your story and what inspired you to focus on eating disorders. So when I was in graduate school, I didn't really think I was going to be working with eating disorders. I just knew that I wanted to be a therapist and I didn't really get the opportunity to work with eating disorders until a few years into my career. And I started working at a residential eating disorder treatment facility in Utah called the Center for Change. And it just basically clicked for me. I was like, this is definitely what I meant to do. I love this work. And having my training in marriage and family therapy, I loved working with families. And so that's just kind of um, followed me, you know, through my career. So now I'm a certified eating disorder specialist, but I still work a ton with families. There are a lot of therapists out there who kind of get burned out, I think, working with teens, but I am not burned out yet. I'm like still going. <laughs> so I just love that. I just love that work. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. And I love that there's more people like us that uh that yeah. <laughs> out there doing it because it's so needed. Um and there's so many teens that just need need help. And I, I will say body image and going into eating disorders, um, I see this quite frequently. And it is a big issue. I would say a growing issue, but it's been a big issue for a long time. Yeah. Let's, there's so many questions I have for this. So the first thing is, what are some signs that we should be worrying about our children's, our teens eating habits and their, their body image? So things to look out for are when teens are starting to diet, Teens don't need to diet. Te teens are going to gain weight all through their teenage years, and especially during puberty. Um, during those three to four years of, of puberty, teens are going to gain like 40 to 50 pounds. And so sometimes um, parents panic, sometimes teens panic, sometimes pediatricians panic. Um, mm -hmm. But we need to understand that that is normal. So if your teen starts deciding, oh, I need to diet, I need to lose weight, you need to be careful about that. You need to be watchful about that. If they are losing weight, if they're counting calories, if their exercise is extreme, mm -hmm. um, you really need to pay attention to that. For sure, they should not be using laxatives. They should not be using diet pills. So anytime they're doing that, that is serious. That, that needs an intervention. Um, obviously if they are binging, um, in uh, like eating a, a lot of food, um, secretively eating a lot of food, um, more really fast, more so than, um, maybe like twice what a me normal meal would be. Um, those kinds of things are, are things to watch out for as well. So... I am already thinking of several teens I know um, who are exercising and very concerned about calorie counting and very concerned about their weight. So we see this. Yes. What can parents do when they see that happening? So this is this is the thing that we need to talk about with parents is Parents do have some influence over their teens, and, and that's the hope, is that parents do still have influence over their teens. At the same time, 
teens are ultimately in charge of their own decisions. Mm -hmm. And so I think it is important for parents to bring that up with their teens and say, hey, I've noticed this is going on. Can you tell me more about this? I'm concerned. Um, if parents are super concerned, I mean, you know, they can they can level up and say, why don't we talk to a professional about this? Let's just see how much of a problem this is. Um, but at the whole time trying to um, allow the teen to kind of have some buy-in on that and, and hopefully have the teen be cooperative. Now, there are extreme situations where parents just have to, you know, call the shots and make the decision to get their teen that help. But in the beginning stages, you know, do your best to try to get that teen to buy in with you so that they will be engaged in the treatment process as well. Okay. And so treatment process, let's say we do look for treatment process. We're not sure the kids are resist, the teens resistant. What can parents do or what should they not do to help their teen in that moment? So if the teen truly has an eating disorder and the parent knows, you know, eating disorders are dangerous, eating disorders are deadly. And so that is definitely a place where a parent would need to intervene. And so if the parent knows that their uh, son or daughter is struggling with an eating disorder, maybe excessive weight loss, maybe purging, you know, excessive exercise, something like that. Um, what they can do is say, hey, we're concerned this needs to happen. Um, we are going to set up, um, maybe it's going to be an intake appointment with a professional. Um, maybe it's going to be like an assessment, kind of like an evaluation to see how serious this is. And we, we need you to participate in that. And um, this, is, this is where it gets hard. And so then as parents, if the teen is not willing to do that, you know what, we're going to have to take away some privileges for you. Or, you know, if you don't do this, then we're going to have to, you know, take away your phone. It depends on, on whatever that teen's um, yeah. thing is. Is it driving? Is it friends? You know, is it the sport? You know, maybe they're involved in a sport and they're saying, you know what, you can't be involved in this sport when you have an active eating disorder and we're going to have to take that away until we get back on track with that. And so hopefully, you know, that will provide the motivation for the teen to at least engage in an assessment. And then from there, you know, hopefully the parent is able to support that treatment professional's assessment. You know, if that treatment mm -hmm. professional is saying, hey, this is a serious situation, you need to, you know, at least have weekly outpatient therapy, or you need to go to day patient treatment, you know, whatever that is, the parent needs to support that recommendation and um, try to help their teen get on board with that as well. Okay, so I have a question too, with, with taking things away, um, when they're going through an eating disorder, some of it is it is it some of it stress related? So my one my one question with that is, how do you know when it's a good thing to take something away and when it's actually just adding more stress to them when you're taking something away that they actually use as stress reduction technique <laughs> and coping skills? How you know I how do we avoid that cycle? So that is that is a good question because a lot of people do use some form of movement as a way to manage their stress or a way to um, help their mental health. So what we need to look at is kind of that um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs mm -hmm. where you have on the bottom there all your basic needs, which are food, shelter. And if your teen is not getting food, they're not eating properly, um, their mental health is going to be crappy anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so the best way for them to have a good mental health is to be nourished properly. And that's the baseline. And then you can add those other levels that will help with mental health. Um, but there are lots of ways to manage stress other than running, you know, three miles a day. <laughs> yeah. and, and so that's when, yeah. again, that professional help 
is important because if you have professionals on board, that professional is going to know when it's appropriate for your child to begin engaging in movement again, when it is safe. And that professional will also help you help that teen access other positive coping skills that they can use to help their mental health while they're establishing that baseline of just nourishment, basic nourishing their body. Right. So what I'm hearing is whatever you have to do to get them help, because this is a seriously dangerous situation. So we need to, yes. we need to get them help. What can parents do to kind of counter this? Because a lot of them aren't in the eating disorder at this point yet, but their body image, they're having serious body image issues. And no matter what, they think they're fat or they're ugly and they're what can parents say to help that? Yeah. So the first thing is not necessarily what you say, it's what you don't say. And as a parent, mm -hmm. set a good example in your own life for your own positive body image. Don't talk about weight in front of your child. Don't talk about counting calories, dieting. Um, you need to protect your child from that because they're exposed to that all the time. Like our culture is heavily steeped in, mm -hmm. in dieting and counting calories and being thin in order to be successful and happy. And they don't need to hear that from you. They're going to get that from, from other places. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing is set an example by not engaging in that kind of talk. And then the second thing I would say is don't argue with them. So sometimes, and, and this is normal. This is just a natural reaction that parents have. So your girl comes to you and she's like, I'm fat and I don't look good. And I, you know, I feel bad about myself or whatever. And the mom is like, darling, you're beautiful. You're my precious baby, you know, da, da, da. And that's normal. I mean, that's, that's just the mother coming mm -hmm. out, but you're never going to win that argument. The problem is that when someone is having poor body image. Yes, they want to hear that positive reinforcement from you, but that just feeds the cycle and tells them that it's important to look good. I'm going to argue with you and tell you you look good because this issue is so important. And so you need to take away the argument, take away that power and just say, you know what? I love you no matter what you look like. So you're not arguing about whether they look good whether they're fat, it, it does not matter because in their mind, <laughs> they think that they are. And so your message mm -hmm. is, such a good point. I love you no matter what you look like. Mm -hmm. mm, that is so important. It's so true. We're countering it in an attempt of building their self-esteem up. But, and you know, I'm thinking, well, they don't believe you anyway, right? right. But hadn't thought about it from the perspective as you are actually just encouraging that thought of it's important to be beautiful and thin by mm -hmm. saying oh wow that's that's really important to get um so what can parents do to build to make sure or not at least encourage their kids to have a positive body image before we even get to that point yeah, so even from the time that they are little, we need to be thinking about this, right, as, as a preventative measure. And that is helping them understand that their body is good um, no matter what it looks like. And so helping them understand that movement is, is fun, but you don't have to engage in exercise to burn off calories, right? Mm -hmm. And doing everything you can to kind of um, neutralize all of those messages from our culture, all those diet culture um, messages, and just letting them know, you know what, your body is wonderful. Um, food is great. It nourishes your body. Um, and, and also this, this message that you don't have to look like everyone else in order to have a successful life. Like there are many great things about you. There are many special things about you um, that have nothing to do with your appearance. And so helping them understand that there are lots mm -hmm. of things you can do in your life um, and, and feel good about, and it has nothing to do with what you look like. Your body is good and it will, it will carry you through um, your whole life doing all these wonderful things. Um, and it doesn't matter 
it, it just doesn't matter in the long run what you look like. Yeah, I think that's so important. And what is really, really crucial that you're modeling a healthy body image as well. Yes. So yes. I know that's, that's been one of my, um, I've been so conscious about that of never, ever saying anything negative about my own self or my weight or anything in front of my daughter. And she's got a great, healthy body image. And I'm like, I want her body image because I don't have that. I'm just faking it in front of her. So she you know, <laughs> feels good about hers, but it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to yeah. see that because I think we have that so built in and we constantly are going, oh, I'm so fat. Oh, I'm so this. And we're just constantly putting, even if we're like stick figures, we're still putting ourselves down for that. And mm -hmm. we're just perpetuating that. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your book. So my book is on body image. It'd be great for teens and adults. Um, I basically, um, I, I was thinking about my book for a lot of years, actually, um, because I present on this topic so often and I just have all these ideas that I wanted to put in one place. And so it's, it's just a really, it's a quick read. It's an easy read. That's my publisher's, um, kind of thing is they like want to make it accessible to lots of people, not just people who love reading and getting in depth. And so it's an, it's a very easy book. It has interventions in it, like little exercises that you can do along um, as you read, just to help give you a boost, just to help you start on that journey to healing your relationship with your body and, and feeling more comfortable in your own skin. Nice, very cool. And if people want to work with you, how do they find you? So you can find me on my website, www.reflectwholenesstherapy.com. There's a little contact form there. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram. I'm a lot more active on Instagram than I am on Facebook these days. <laughs> um, I need to get back to Facebook, but I got on, you know, the other day and I started looking at things and I'm like, oh, this is... <laughs> I didn't know that person was so weird. <laughs> so maybe I need to curate my Facebook so I can get yeah. that on there. <laughs> so I'm a lot more active on Instagram if, if you want to um, follow me there. Perfect. And you have, a, you have something free to give us too, right? Yes. And so I have a body image meditation that I recorded. So it is my voice, but I try to be like, relaxed and calm. <laughs> and it's basically a, a body image meditation that you can do multiple times. And it's just something to help expose you um, to your own body and get used to being in your own body um, as it is today. So Ooh, if you go to my that. website, yeah. So if you go to my website, um, I'm just going to ask you to sign up for my newsletter um, to in order to access that meditation. And um, it's, it's just a really, it's just another tool, right? We all need like different tools to help us um, navigate this world and the body that we're in. And this is another great tool. That's fantastic. And I'll put all the links in the show notes so people can find you and find that um, and your book and everything. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, Amy, any parting words of encouragement for parents with teens? Yes. First of all, it's not your fault like you can do the best you can do, right? As a parent. And secondly, I love this idea, Dr. Cam, that you shared about how you're helping your daughter with positive body image. It's what I call positive body image heritage. Mm -hmm. Even if we didn't inherit positive body image from our parents, we can make the difference. We can be the difference and we can pass, pass that on to our children and, uh, you know, all the people that we have influence over. And so that's the other message I would leave is try to pass on a positive body image heritage. Love that so much. So important. So Amy, I just want to thank you again for joining us. We are going to do this again for the whole power hour for a full hour. So I know there's us for power hour. You can register at askdrcam.com slash power hour. And I will have all the links for you um, 
for all this stuff to reach Amy. And if you got anything, which I know you got a ton out of this interview <laughs> with Amy, please like and forward and share with a friend and comment and do all those things so other parents that can find it. And other than that, have a peaceful, positive, calm day.